Hi grade nines, today we're going to do another video on solving equations, but this time we'll have negatives in our equation. So before we start, please get yourself a pencil and a piece of paper so you can do math with me. This was the question that was um, at the beginning of the video, 12 minus 3x is equal to negative 3. But what I want you to do is I want you to first think about this question we did yesterday, where we had 5x minus 3 is equal to 47. That means we had x, we multiplied by 5, we subtracted 3 to get 47, and we wanted to undo that to find the x. What I want you to notice is that 5x minus 3 is equal to 47 is actually the same thing as negative 3 plus 5x is equal to 47. It doesn't matter whether you write the subtraction part at the beginning or put it second, it's the same equation. When I did this question yesterday, I just added three here and added three here. Um, so that means I got 50, these cancel out, and I had five X. And then all I did was I divided by five, and so x was equal to 10. I was undoing the things I had done to the x. To the x, I had multiplied by five, and then I'd subtracted three and got 47. So instead of subtracting three, I added three. And then I only had five times x, but I wanna undo the five times x. So then I have to divide by five and I get x is equal to 10. Let's do that same work when the question looks like this. This just means I have five times X and this negative three. I want to get rid of the negative three. So I'm going to add three. So I get 50, these cancel out and I have five X. I'm going to divide both sides by five and I get X is equal to 10. I just did this example because I want to show you that it doesn't matter whether you write the equation like this as we did yesterday, or like this, it's the exact same steps. What you need to remember is you always do the division part, the part that has the x next to it, five times x, you always undo that by dividing in the last step. Let's look at the question with the negatives. So I just wanna remind you that this three is not just three, it's actually negative three x. So that means I could put the negative 3x first, and this 12 has nothing in front of it, so it means plus 12 is equal to negative 3. I could change it, and maybe that will make it make more sense to you. It means that I have this x, I'm multiplying it by negative 3, I'm adding 12, to get negative three. So I want to undo those things. So the first thing that I want to undo is I want to undo this plus 12. So I'm going to put a minus 12 here and a minus 12 over here. These would cancel out. And all I have on the left side is minus three X equals negative three, subtract 12 would give me negative 15. A mistake that is very common is that people just write down the 3. They don't write down the negative 3. You need to remember that the sign that comes in front stays with that number. So now I have this x and I multiplied it by negative 3 to get negative 15. I want to undo that. So that means I want to divide by negative 3. Divide by negative 3. And these cancel out. I just have x. Oops negative three, x is equal to five. And what you might wanna do, a very good idea, is to check. If I, with my calculator, put a five right here, if I did negative three times five plus 12, you should get negative three. If you don't get negative three, it means you made a mistake with your algebra. There's actually another way you can check this. You could check it by making a table of values. You know your table of values always goes 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. These are my x's, my y's would be over here. So we need to look at the left side of the equation. 
And if I look at the left side of the equation, I want you to tell me which one of those numbers is my initial value and which one is my rate of change. Well, I know my rate of change is the part with the x's. So that means it's jumping by negative three each time. And that must mean that the 12, the part that's all by itself without an x, that's my initial value. So let's check to see. If I start at 12 and I jump down three, I would get nine, and then I would get six, and then I would get three, and then I would get zero, and then I would get negative three. Now, how does that prove that our algebra is right? Remember, what we're doing when we're doing algebra is we're trying to find what x is gonna give us the answer we want. Well, when we have x is equal to five, I get that my y should be equal to minus three. So my table of values is another way I can show that I did it right. Okay, let's try this next question. Now remember that this just means that I had negative eight times x and then I had a subtract two to get my six. So that means I wanna undo this subtract two part. And the way I'm gonna undo subtract two is to do plus two. These cancel out and I'm left with eight and here I have negative eight x. I want to get my x all by itself so I wanna move this negative eight. So that means x is equal to negative one. Now, let's see how I can check with the table of values. So I have zero, one, two, three. These are my x's. Let's look up here at this equation. It's jumping by negative eight. That's my rate of change. So it's going down negative eight. But it starts at negative two. So that means if I started at negative two and I kept going down by eight, it'd be great if you had a calculator to try this. You would get negative 10, and then you get negative 18, and then you get negative um, 26. But these numbers here are never going to seem to give you this answer right here. Hmm, there must be a problem. There's actually not a problem. Let's go backwards in our table. When we're going down in our table, we're going down eight. But when I go up in my table, I'm gonna go up eight. So negative two plus eight gives you six. And what's the number? Three, two, one, zero. What's the number that comes right in front here? Negative one. So we have shown that when x is equal to negative one, my answer should be six.